In this video, we'll cover all things business opportunity. We'll cover how to search for business opportunities, how to list business opportunities, and also how to manage your listed business opportunities. The first thing we're going to cover today is how to go about searching for business opportunities. To do so, you'll simply click the blue search business opportunities button. What that will take you into is the search. Now that we've done that, you'll get a message to see if you want to continue your last search. I'm going to say no and just go ahead and hit cancel. And then what that will do is take me to a screen. It does show that we have too many business opportunities to view our results. You can see that here, there's 279 active listings that meet our active business opportunities that meet that criteria. And in order to be able to even view listings, you need to get those results under 200. So you'll need to further refine your search. So the first thing we'll cover here is just kind of what to expect on this screen. So this is the map view. You can switch it to the satellite view if you'd like. You can drag the map around um, if you'd want. And you can also draw a shape on the map if there's a specific area you'd like to see the listings at. Over here, you'll have your search filters. And then once we have listings, you'll see them populate over here on the right. So I can see since I selected business opportunities, the only listing type selected is BizOp. And then from there, I can kind of start to dwindle down my results. Some things to keep in mind when you are applying filters is that less is more. So the fewer filters that you apply, the more results you'll see. And then as you apply filters, you simply need to check out of the last section that you filled in so you can click anywhere outside of it and that will cause the filter to update on the map for you. So some filters you have available on business opportunities and this main search listings one, you've got uh, the listing type, the business opportunity type. So I'm just gonna go ahead and deselect them. It does have them all selected and I'll select one. That will start to narrow down our results a little bit. So you can see by clicking retail, I now have 34 results and they're gonna appear over here on the right. Um, you can enter a sell price range. So if there's a price point you'd like, and if you do have the SEBA ID saved of a specific listing, you can type that listing or listings in with a comma. The next section that you have available to you um, when searching for business opportunities is going to be the area location. So here you can search by market area and to expand for like a specific section of an area that we have, you just simply click the down arrow next to the name of the larger submarket. And once you do that, it's broken down even further into many more submarkets. So I'm just going to select a few so we can see what happens when we do that. Now I've got those selected and my 34 results has narrowed down even further to just two. You can also search by like an address or just typing in a city, state, and zip code here if you'd like to do it that way. The last, the next section that is on here is going to be price options and sell, sell type. Um, there's zero dollar properties that you can include or not, um, but there's not as many filters there um, for searching business opportunities. And then property and construction are not applicable, so you don't need to worry about filling those in. And then the last section that does have a, applicable filters is going to be additional search options. So if you click on that, you can see you can type in a keyword. You can search by a specific agent or office. You can enter an inter date range or a listing date range if you want to look at newer listings. Um, if you did happen to want to look at inactive um, business opportunities, so sold ones, you can simply type in um, a sold date range and get an idea of maybe what other people listed it as, or if you're wanting to find one and you're not seeing it, that's a good way to look and see if it's sold already. Another thing to keep in mind here, as far as these additional search option goes, is if you do choose to use a keyword, we do suggest that you do use that as your primary search filter or start with the keyword. Just again, because less is more and because those keywords are not a required field, sometimes it can take a lot of listings out. So it's good to start there and see if you um, need to add anything additional. So now that we've kind of gone through the process of searching for a listing, we can go through reviewing the listings that you have available in your results. So to do that, you just simply click um, on the address with the listing. Now that I've done that, it's pulled the listing over my map. I can see more details by scrolling on the listing. Um, I can pull the SIBA associated flyer see any other additional information that they have available. I can see all their images. I can choose to email the listing directly from this screen. And 
Um, it might take a bit to load, so I'll give it a second here. Now that I've done that, I'm able to fill in my, um, maybe my client details, or you want to send it to another agent, you can choose to type that in and include any flyers that are there. Um, and then you can choose a report type, so you can email a specific listing to your clients or to yourself or another agent. You can create a report here. Um, just for the individual listing by clicking that button. I'm going to close that. And then if I'm done with reviewing this listing, I can simply just hit back to map here. You can do that for as many listings as you'd like. Um, all listings are automatically going to be included in your reports when you're searching for business opportunities. So to remove them, you simply click on the orange X there. What that will do is take the listing off so it will not appear in the report that you're making. So let's say this is the only listing I want to include um, on my report. So then I can simply just go to create report at the bottom here. I can choose the report type that I want to do. So we've got the listing detail or the brief report. I'll just pull listing detail um, so we can preview that. And then down below, you'll want to customize it. So you can choose if you want to do it for brokers. And what that would include is all the information here. Or if you want it for clients, it's going to take out some of that information that you don't want them to see, um, specifically if you don't want them to see the outside agent's information. So making sure to switch it to for clients will remove that for you. From there, you can choose to preview or download report. You can also email it if you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and hit download just so we can get a preview of what that looks like. And this is what that full listing report looks like um, for our business opportunity listings. I'm going to go ahead and close this now because I don't need to do anything with that. I'm going to close the create report again. And if this is a search that you know you'll come back to regularly, you can choose to save the search simply by clicking save search down here. You'll just give it a name and then you'll be able to load the search up at any time. If you'd also like to set up email alerts for these searches, you'll want to one, save it as a regular search and then two, save the search again, but save it as a hot sheet. And what that will do once you do that is give you the option on if you want to receive those hot sheets emails in the morning or in the evening. And what you'll do is get an email um, anytime a new business opportunity listing comes up that matches your search results. And that covers the basics for how to search for business opportunities. I'm going to go ahead and just cancel this because I don't need to set up a save search or a hot sheet. Now that I've done that, we can go through the process of listing a business opportunity. To access or add business opportunities, you want to go up to the welcome common name menu up here on the upper left hand side. Once you drop that down, uh, a drop down menu will appear and you can select my biz ops. And once this loads, it would take you into your active business opportunity listing screen. So we'll give it a moment to do so. Okay, now we're in the My Active Business Opportunity listing screen. You can see down below here um, any active business opportunities you have. If you need to access your off-market business opportunities, you just go up to these filters up here and where it says active, switch it to off-market. You can also apply a few more filters here. So you can look at just specific listing dates if you want to see only your most recent listings. Um, you can switch to status. So if you know you've got something on hold um, and you don't want to go through the process of looking for that listing number, you can switch it to hold and then apply by hitting go. You can add a business opportunity here. You can view the uh, listing views for your listings here. Um, you can toggle or you can switch from your business opportunity listings into your sell and lease listings by hitting this My Listings button here. And you can confirm your listings with this button here. And down below, um, again, you'll see your active listings. You can choose to edit them. You can see the number of views. You can confirm them and request a broadcast. We'll go over this a little bit more in detail um, once we finish the process of going through and adding a business opportunity. So I'm going to do that by hitting Add Business Opportunity. And what that's going to do is take me into the Business Opportunity Listing Input screen. Now that I've done that, this is what that process looks like. I'm just going to go ahead and check yes to hold listing because I don't want to make this a live listing. And then from there, I want to fill in my listing input. Some things to keep in mind um, is that as you're filling these in, um, there are a lot of fields, but the only things that you do have to 100% have filled in in order to submit these listings is going to be your um, 
red required fields, and those are also indicated with an asterisk. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill some of these in so we can see what that looks like. The market area, once you click on that, you can either do it as a larger submarket, or again, if you click on the plus sign, it'll expand out for you and you can select a specific submarket area within those smaller or in the larger markets, and then you just hit done. Once you do that, it'll populate that information in for you. Now scroll down a little bit more, um, the price you'll need to fill in, the listing date you can type in. And then the commission is just the amount that's going to go to the outside broker. Do this. Put my um, expiration date, your listing date, and your expiration date should come directly from your listing agreements. So keep that in mind. And then some information just directly relating to the business is going to be what's required down here. Okay, and then the form of ownership, we'll just do that. My income information. <laughs> and then you can add comments here. These in internet comments are gonna be on the public site. And then the member comments are gonna be only viewable, viewable <laughs> by users logged in as SEPA members. Now that I made my kind of test uh, input, I can go ahead and hit submit changes. And what that's done is it has created a listing for me. So now when we go, um, it's gonna allow me to edit the listing a bit more. I'm also gonna show you what this looks like now when I go to welcome comma my name and then my biz ops. Now, instead of having one listing showing up, I will have two. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go in the process of editing that listing that we've added. So I'm gonna go ahead and click edit next to the listing number. And then that takes me into the listing um, or the business opportunity listing that we just created. From here, I can make any changes that I need to. I can update my status to available because we did start it on new. But then instead, I'm also gonna go over here to manage media. So when you need to add images or flyers to your business opportunities, you'll need to go into that edit screen and then again, select the manage media button. And this is the media manager screen. So you can add a main listing photo, any additional images that you'd like here. Um, keep in mind that they cannot be watermarked and um, you do have to have permission to upload those. So you you need to go through and check those boxes here that you do have those permissions. If you scroll down further, you can add any flyers or relevant links to the listings as well. Um, so that's kind of the basics on editing your listings. I'm going to go ahead and hit the back button twice. So we just get back to that My Business Opportunities screen. And then from here, the last thing I want to show you is requesting a broadcast email for your business opportunities. So you can do that just by clicking the Start a Broadcast button here. And once we do that, it will take us into the broadcast email request form. So this is how you do it. You simply start by selecting a color that you want, the reason for your broadcast email, and then your target group. So this should be relevant to your listing. So if your listing has real property, you can select the sales type. But if it is just the business for sale, you do want to only select business opportunity. I am having a little bit of trouble, so we... We'll ignore, there we go. Um, so it will um, be able to select business opportunity. Again, if the real property is for sale, then you could also select the appropriate um, other groups. The next section is gonna be market area. So um, to send it to a market area, just simply click add, edit market areas. And then this pop-up is gonna appear just like it did when we were entering the marketing market area on the actual business opportunity listing. And you can just hit the check to expand if you wanna send it somewhere really specific, or you can send it to the whole group by checking the um, checkbox next to the larger submarket information. I'm gonna go ahead and hit done. And then as I scroll down, I can see all the market areas that I've selected here. My subject line is automatically generated. Um, you do have capability to change that, but keep in mind when you do, it does need to be relevant to the business opportunity um, broadcast itself. And then it also shouldn't be in all caps. 
You can send a message here to us at the SEBA staff as to why the message should go out. Broadcast emails can be sent out once every four weeks and every user can send up to four a day. And then you can also schedule if you'd like the broadcast email to go out at a later date versus like today or this afternoon. And that's the basics on adding, editing um, business opportunities as well as searching for them. Thank you.